So here we go again. Another week, another update and more patch notes for Battlefield 2042, this time with update 4.1. This is quite a big one, even though they underhyped it a little bit. We've got a few little reworks of different mechanics, new vault weapons and a lot more to talk about. So stick around because here are a lot of the changes that you may not have noticed and how they will impact the game going forward. Let's start with the teaser for the next mid-season event coming in the next couple of weeks called Leviathan Rising. Now the only tagline we've got for this is that we have to shut down the Leviathan and from what we can decipher, seems like the Leviathan is the Shearwater satellite that's gonna terraform the Earth. At least that's what we're assuming. And I'm assuming it's gonna be Blasco's Leviathan division or whatever they're called, gonna be going into there to shut that down or trying to activate it while the opposing team goes and does the opposite. It'll be interesting how they up the ante for the next event, where there'll just be skins again, how ambitious the mode will be, we'll just have to wait and see. And of course, on the big list of changes, we have the new vault weapons with the AK-971, the RPK-74M, and the MP-443. All of these weapons are very anticipated for me. From Portal, it seems like the AK is a little floaty. We'll see how it performs in All Out Warfare, and I'll have my full thoughts on that tomorrow with the rest of the vault weapons in a review. The RPK, I don't actually think is in Portal. I think that's new, although I could be wrong. I was searching for it today and couldn't find it. So very excited for that one. And the MP-443 is a fine sidearm. I've used it a fair bit and it also has a neat little secret reload so keep an eye out for that one if you're using it. As I said, full review coming tomorrow on these weapons. Now next on the big changes we have armor plates and how they're being overhauled completely as they now only apply to your torso so they're less effective overall. This is a change I've been asking for for a while because while the community has been asking DICE to remove them completely saying they have no place in Battlefield, which I do actually agree with to an extent, I don't know how legally okay it would be to remove a gadget from the game completely and vault it. There might be some sort of requirement to keep it in because the shortcut keys that you can get that allow you to unlock stuff and it's obligated in those passes to give you this item. I think this is a nice compromise. Now, if you shoot someone in the head, leg, arm, whatever it is, if it's not the chest, they're gonna take damage normally and the armor plate won't apply. This is gonna be seen probably most in Hazard Zone where everyone gets armor plates from the get-go. You're gonna be seeing a lot more players getting kills faster than other players who are less skilled because they'll be getting headshots on their opponents or be targeting areas that aren't the chest for maximum effect. Interesting to see how this plays out in the future. We'll see how the meta adjusts, if it does at all. Not a lot of people run armor plates, to be honest. So we'll just have to see where we go from that. But I'm interested to see how it affects Hazard Zone the most, for sure. Now let's go into the smaller stuff that you may not have noticed. You'll be seeing chat in the top left or wherever it appears for you will now be less prominent. It'll stand out less and cover less of the screen because the background will be translucent, I believe. Here is a picture of the old chat and the new one will be far better than this. Moving on, we've got a few new XP events. I really like these inclusions as we have XP events for destroying EOD bots, fortifying objectives by putting down ammo crates or claymores in friendly areas, and reviving on an objective. This is actually really cool to see. It makes a lot of the actions you take in the game feel more robust and official in a way. Bit of a strange way of putting it, but that's just kind of how I feel about it. It makes the game feel a lot more polished when all of these little actions are rewarded and it feels less unfinished as an overall XP system. I'd love to see them continually add more XP events, maybe assist counts as kills, stuff like that. Keep it coming. We've got a few throwable issues fixed and melee damage issues fixed when prone and when moving. An interesting change is you can now barge through doors while sliding. That's a lot more viable now before you just stop, but now you can go sliding into a building and clear it on the move, which is gonna add a bit more skill to breaching buildings as you can now do them quickly, but at the expense of maybe your aim. Some of you may have noticed when vaulting over low objects, the camera would shake unnecessarily like you were falling from a height. I've seen this a couple times and luckily that's been fixed now as well. I do like the new animations for falling, but they've triggered when not intended to recently, so nice to see that fixed. And overall, the vaulting animations apparently have been made smoother. I can't really notice that too much, but it seems like they have a little bit. Same with the Recallers M5 and Liz Missile. Their animations are now smoother as well. I haven't had a chance to test this out yet because I've been busy grinding for the vault weapons. But let me know if you've noticed any improvements on those. Also, the default weapon for the Engineer has now been shifted to the LCMG when it was the DM7 before. This makes so much sense. It didn't make sense how it was the DM7 because marksman rifles have no benefit when you're an Engineer. An Engineer's weapon is the LMG class. So glad to see that shifted because new players are going to be confused as to which weapon they get their proficiency in maybe if they're given a marksman rifle as default. Also some good news for Sundance players as her requirement for tier 1-inger has been lowered from 30 to 20 kills 
put here. This is really good to see because this one was especially hard. Same with Crawford, we're now down from 50 to 30, Zane from 50 to 30, and Liz has had one of the biggest changes because it's gone from 10 vehicles destroyed per tier to 10 kills when destroying vehicles. So if you target condors, you're gonna be hitting them and getting maybe five kills per condor taken out and that will contribute so much more than the one vehicle destroyed that you would have gone previously. Same for Dozer, it's now been changed from 20 shield kills to 40 CQB kills. Now you can run around with an SMG and an assault rifle in close quarters, take out people and get rewarded on your tier one for that. Apparently there's been a lot of changes for HDR audio, I haven't noticed these too much going forward myself. I do play on 3D audio, maybe I should switch to war tapes or something like that just to see, but apparently that has had a bit of an overhaul. But another audio change that I have noticed is the EBLC RAM sometimes got stuck on its gear and changed into the same gear over and over again in the audio. That's been fixed. Now that really bugged me, it showed up once and that's the only time I've heard it, but that has been sorted. Now when you're stuck with my favorite gadget in the game, the SPH launcher, you'll hear the audio much better and it'll be a lot more readable when you're stuck. I mean, there's not much you can do about it, but maybe you can run away from your friendlies and not get them killed as well. You'll now notice that all of your 2042 melee weapons are now in portal as well, which is awesome to see. You can now equip all of those and not just the portal specific ones. If you equip smokes, they can now explode underwater, although I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do this because not many maps even feature water, but I guess if you're in the middle of kaleidoscope with the big shallow lake part, they can now explode on that if you want to cross that easily with smokes. We've got a couple more claymore changes as well. Friendly claymores will now show up on the map, which will help you read where areas are maybe blocked off and enemies can't approach from, allowing you to cover angles better. And claymores now can't be triggered by enemies who are below its radius, whereas before, it wasn't working as intended and did work that way. Unfortunately for any of you who love using the EOD bot, it can't defuse MCOMs in Rush anymore. The EOD bot overall is a little bit scuffed, doesn't control well and bounces everywhere, so I don't know why you want to use that in its current state anyway. I believe the team are looking into fixing that one, but it can't defuse MCOMs anymore, but they are looking at that to be reinstated in the future. If you play Angel, you'll now find that you can't call in your loadout crate on vehicles or on bushes. So there's a couple more places you can't set that crate down. So that's something to be aware of. If you play Casper and EMP things, which I actually have, I went and tier one Casper in one night by playing Rush XL. And I noticed that you can take out a lot of gadgets with this drone with the EMP and it's actually really useful. And now it's even more useful because you can deal damage to Claymores, C5, AT mines, proc sensors, and you can EMP the EBLC RAM spawn beacon. So there's a whole host of new things you can do with Casper's drone to aid your team and stop the enemy from blocking off lines of attack and spawning in. Sad news for the Ranger though, as you can no longer heal it with Falk's Pistol, which is a funny little thing you could do before. Somehow heal metal, you can no longer do that. An interesting and very niche change that's also been made is that Irish's defense system can now intercept the Ghostmaker, the crossbow, explosive bolts. I didn't expect him to even like address this because not a lot of people use the Ghost Maker, let alone enough to unlock the explosive bolts and then main them. But if you are using those to clear any objectives and using it as its own little SPH explosive launcher, you can no longer do that, it will be intercepted. We have snipers that now have a dispersion penalty when you're moving. This is a little bit weird to see because we haven't had that the whole game, but now snipers are gonna get real penalties when trying to move and shoot at the same time. This has been in every other Battlefield game till now, so it makes sense it's brought over, but it's quite weird to see this late in the game. But personally, I think snipers are slightly underpowered, if anything, so it'll be interesting to see how the recon players take this one, because I'm not a recon player myself, I could be completely wrong, maybe they're completely overpowered as hell, but in my experience, they're not. And finally, we have open seat blast damage to be properly applied now. Now what this means is, and I've actually run into this a couple times with the SPH when attaching it to lat V4 recons, is that if you shoot a launcher or an explosive device at an open vehicle like the recon, it will hit it and then sometimes the vehicle will absorb all that damage and nobody inside will die. And really nice to see this one fixed because it's kind of frustrating when a lat V4 is maybe bullying your team in hazard zone and you fire an SPH grenade at it and it sticks and doesn't kill anyone inside but then just does eight damage to the vehicle. So nice to see that one addressed. We'll make that a lot more viable now. All right, so there we have it. All the changes from Battlefield 2042 update 4.1 with more on the way in a couple weeks, I imagine with 4.2, the Leviathan event, hopefully 
the discarded rework. Can't wait to cover that one. If you did enjoy today's video, please hit like and subscribe. It really does help a lot. And I think 98% of you aren't subbed. It would be lovely to have you on board. And also let me know what you think of this format. I'm talking a lot more about the changes rather than just listing them off. So taking some of your feedback on board to improve these videos, hopefully spark a bit more conversation on how things can be changed. So let me know how you find this change in the comments below. Unfortunately, it's come to the point where I just don't really have the time to hop into the game and search for all of the stealth changes being made. So I'm trying to focus on the public changes and address how they might affect the game's meta and how it plays. So anyway, if you do want to come and talk to me or anybody else that does love this game, head over to the NoSwap Discord. There'll be links in the description as always. And thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh.